Hello and welcome. It is 10.30 on a Friday night, Bank Holiday Friday. Happy Good Friday to you all. Um, and tonight, Untold Chronicles, Gardens of Shidakla. Thank you very much for joining us in chat. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are looking forward to this. Let us move across to the game. And yes, video, audio is all hopefully working. Thank you very much for the subscription, Doug. I really appreciate that. And that's an important point as well. Um, tonight we're doing interactive. So if you're in chat, you can, uh, through a number of different ways, uh, affect the game. Um, through either subscribing or donating it's all on our discord channel if you want to sort of check out all the different means and methods of doing that um, but if you if you subscribe you can automatically give one of the players a heroic action point or a hat point uh, which is the equivalent in D D fifth ed of basically a re-roll a re-roll of a d20 um, but as i say double check all the information out on discord we'll try and explain it as the game goes along uh, but we really uh, very much uh, really kind of uh, blown away by all the support we get from our community so thank you very much for that um, so thank you chat uh, for playing and watching along with us thank you players for being with us and um, thank you those of you watching on catch up as well on video and demand or on youtube we also want to say a big thank you to uh, hero forge who uh, gave us very generously permission to use all of their um, images we can use their website to create images for the stream and uh, many of the images that we use are fundamentally uh, designed from the Hero Forge website. Um, um, many of the character images designed using Hero Forge are a wonderful way to create your own custom miniatures and get them 3D printed. Uh, you can find them at www.heroforge.com. But please note anything mentioned on the stream may not represent the view or beliefs of Hero Forge, a Sky Castle Studios LLC product. Um, check them out. They are super cool. It's a great way to spend a few hours kind of customizing and designing and getting inspiration for characters as well. Um, so that is Hero Forge. That is our beautiful viewers and let us move across to our equally as beautiful players um we're gonna let them introduce themselves so theon uh would you like to introduce yourself please certainly not beautiful but my name is andy as well uh yeah i play here i Excellent. just don't know what else to say <laughs> uh very cool um it's a great name andy i like it a lot and then we go to Dino Bri and Dino Brian. Basically, it's just not Dino Brian. It's not an Irish name. No, um, that's the only thing we got. <laughs> it sounds like it. It's not what it's meant to sound like. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm James, and James is drinking a bottle of wine, and I am uglier than yeah, our, probably our <laughs> listeners by just the law of averages. But, um, it's not a webcam game, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, this is one of the advantages. You get to see my beautiful face and nobody else's. I am the pretty one, because you can only see me. Uh, then we move to Ty. I'm not going to produce... Uh, try, try Ty Menor, Menoroff. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not it's bad, a... yeah. 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 Uh, I'm Doug. I play uh, Ty or Ty Menoroff or Folio Alanir, as he is uh, almost... Uh, uh, stupidly called um and yeah i'm doug force on the uh, discord server awesome and last but not least uh edius hi there i'm pete playing edius and uh yeah from the deepest darkest areas around leicestershire perfect Ooh. dialing in tonight awesome uh, welcome aboard and thank you very much for joining us. Without you, our players, we wouldn't have a stream. And I do appreciate it because it 
you know it is 10 30 to midnight it is a uh, unusual hour to be doing this um so a quick recap our protagonists are searching for the gardens of Shidakla. Uh, supposedly rumors and whispers have reached the world at wise that deep amongst the icy wastes of the southern continent uh, is supposedly a unbelievable untouched world uh, known as the gardens of Shidakla. Uh, many people have uh, travelled to try and find these. The, uh, they arrived after a three-month hellish journey by boat from Europa uh, to this southern continent and have been making their way across the ice fields towards this ever-growing mountain range. Uh, they became more and more suspicious of their guide, uh, Tikwana. Uh, she was drawing many of the other um, sort of explorers into her snow hole at night. And it soon became apparent after a number of days travel that they were, um, they were being infected uh, by this guide of theirs and being turned, uh, being, diseased by some kind of fungal growth. In fact, one of our protagonists had also been infected, but caught it in time and removed uh, removed that effect. Um, confronting their guide, it seems that all of the other people that had been taken over by this uh, fungal spore disease turned on them as well. And this is the scene that we open. The white ice and snow stained crimson. Uh, bodies, many bodies of the travellers and the body of their guide now lying in piles around them as they manage to survive the combat. But they have a difficult decision to make now whether to stride forward or whether to try and return back. They are, though, in a dangerous place. Their supplies are low. So the camera sort of pans down. It is, as a reminder, bright light due to the fact that you've come in the summer months, so the sun rarely dips down beyond the horizon. Uh, the snow is stained scarlet and crimson with the blood of your... Uh, victims um what does the camera see how are you reacting to all of this it is uh looks down at the mess he's just made of the guide's skull um which is looking quite fungal now yeah it's it's interesting i'll give you a, a reminder description there's only the front bit that kind of appears to be flesh this kind of thin death mask that was being manipulated and even now you can see tears within it there are kind of uh, insipid kind of white root type things almost like tendrils or tentacles that are still twitching even though you know it's dead how about the two people who we have asleep are they how far gone do they look now we can see them properly um yes uh you're not going to need a roll for this as you kind of look at them uh, they they weren't disguised with kind of a skin flesh mask, but they were heavily covered because of the intense cold. And as you carefully remove some of the furs from around them, yeah, they are gone as well. Uh, slightly different rather than twitching tendrils. There are kind of big kind of bloated growths of fungal matter all over their bodies. They are almost unrecognisable as human anymore. 
Well, this is a foul business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Elias is um, kind of looking to see what, what of their... He, he, the survivalist in him is kicking in and he wants to look and see what there is around here that they should take from these bodies. Um, he wants to avoid trying to take a, a lung full of spores if he can, but he, he wants to see. Okay. So, uh, do, 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 their, do their supplies seem to be destroyed or, or ruined or, or moldy or anything like that? Or is it. Give us. What is there to find around here? Uh, give us an investigation roll as you kind of carefully make <laughs> your way through. Ideas, if you're looking at the supplies, I am capable of purifying any fungally infected food. Edith is being a little careful. Yeah, <laughs> no, but, but it's 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 not it's not over challenging. This is this is Untold Chronicles, and we are using some homebrew rules with this. Uh, and it's it's a simple task. You just need to be careful about it, and I'm bearing that in mind as well. Uh, it it's not good. There are scant supplies on them, substantially less than you would expect, and you begin to think now that. Um, much of their necessary supplies have been abandoned on the way, now reburied in snow holes. And you remember the dead that you uncovered in there um, a few sort of days back. Uh, there are scant supplies on them, but nowhere near enough, and they are infected, so you would have to uh, call upon the services to have them purified. I suggest we don't we don't hang on here and we head towards the mountains. There's nothing here. Let's let's. I uh, I agree. Is, is there any um? Is there any sign of a, a dagger amongst anyone's stuff? I, he just is feeling uh, that he he. When we had those wolves, that we killed. Um, he, he should have a dagger with him, and he hasn't got a dagger. Yeah, he feels, it's, he feels kind of bad. It's easy yeah. enough to find a, a a dagger. It's 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 a small knife rather than a dagger, but it would function the same, really. Um, it's not really designed for combat, but to be honest, a shiv is a shiv is a shiv, and it, it's still going to it's still going to do some severe damage if you catch somebody properly with it. Um, so you can easily gather up a, a few daggers, should you wish to. Um, but there are scant supplies on these. The furs are all covered in mould and would have to be sort of purified. Um, they are far gone. And it's, it was probably only through your sharp eyes that you uncovered the fact that uh, your... Uh, your companion here that had the itchy neck that you caught it in time otherwise that could have spread around your snow hole and infected all of you as well it seems that you got lucky uh, while that's going on ty's going to wander over to tikwana mm -hmm. uh, or rather what's left of tikwana um and just having never seen anything like yeah. this before it's just going to effectively sort of you know covering his mouth with a with a, a scarf or something, he's going to kneel down next to her and just sort of start to make some notes and, and have a look and see whether or not it's just the head that's this stuff or if there's anything, if it's like a, a suit of skin, effectively. Uh, it's not quite a suit of skin, uh, but most of her body was covered up with either furs or clothes or gloves. And as you kind of remove those things, you see that there is this unnatural fibrous tendrils that are all matted together still as i say moving the one thing that you notice is that now it's lying in the sun mm. and um it's it's kind of open to the sun there is a degree of sensitivity to it uh, as if that without this skin face mask, without the heavy furs, uh, the sunlight would have affected Tequana quite badly. 
I, I, Theon's just standing there prodding everything with his quarter stuff going, uh, 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 yeah. Uh. As you do it, there's the occasional kind of release of spores. Nothing to be particularly too too concerned about, but it's quite obviously that this is how it spreads. We should move. Let's not linger here before it gets worse. For the, uh, to... Is it worth taking some of these supplies, or do we just get to the gardens and hope we get there before we run out? Yeah, They're no contaminated. Where the gardens are. Well, I know. Mountains will provide shelter. Let's get to them. More importantly than shelter, it'll give us a good view. Hopefully, we will but, see. That uh, too. But give me a second. <clears throat> and um, Dinobrian gathers up what meager supplies we have mm -hmm. uh, and places his hand over them. And you see, as all the food goes a kind of grey, dull colour. Hmm. Will not taste nice, but I doubt it ever could. Okay. Purify food and drink. Uh, it is purified, um, but again, you've got kind of narrative agency here. And whilst it, you know, is not going to be harmful, have you drained all of the of the yeah. flavour out of it? It just looks and tastes boring. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, so, still going to function, still going to keep you going, but it is it is just kind of the base level of what you need no flavor no color doesn't look appetizing uh, but Lovely. you've managed to gather a, a fair amount of supply i mean this is certainly going to help you on your journey um are you attempting to bury the bodies or are you just moving on moving on move on yeah no need to waste no, no need to waste that time i'm trying to bury these the snow will do that for us much though the uh, mushroom girl was keen for us to move quickly, um, I think now it might be the time that we should keep moving quickly. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Now, finding your way towards or heading directly towards the mountains is not an issue. The mountains are huge. And uh, the, to put it into a degree of perspective, the, the hills, the kind of white-topped, uh sort of base hills are kind of like the himalaya size and then above that are even bigger kind of mountains that don't appear to have snow upon them at all kind of black twisted rock they must be absolutely gigantic the largest certainly largest size of mountains range that idios you have ever ever seen um, so it's not difficult to head towards the mountains but to know exactly where Taquana was headed is going to be a little bit more challenging so as you move forward we're going to need someone to do a bit of navigation or uh, do maybe some kind of survival you can work together or uh, this can be someone just taking point in the lead uh, how would you like to achieve this effect? Edius is uh, a little bit reticent to take the lead. He uh, he would uh, he would give a large amount of, uh, of of coin for one of his brothers or sisters. Round about now. I'm not quite the range my father was, but I will happily take the lead. I, I will I will help with with what what I have to offer. I um, think I think we should work together in the ice. Yeah, I'm a natural wanderer, but let's work together. So, uh, hanging around solo out here isn't going to do anybody any favors. Let's let's get towards those mountains and see what shelter we can get, and then assess our situation. Try and try and see if we can see our trucks. For, going back across the ice and see if we can draw a line yep to uh to try and 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 working together to try and figure out which way might be straight ahead I don't right. know if somebody else wants to, to roll and try to take advantage with that as yes. uh, as they're coming together um ty will start to sing an old song from the Feywild of his uh 
Um, grandfather story of his grandfather searching the way through a desert, and I will give bardic inspiration to Dinobrian. Okay, excellent. Cool. Um, so, I, will, I suppose, guide myself as well. Yeah, I so mean, stack it all on, guys. I stack it uh, on. Well, this is again, this is Untold Chronicles, and don't forget if you beat the challenge rating by 10, it counts as a critical success. Um, so, um, yeah, working together and putting all these things into the pot potentially can uh, turn a failure into success or a success into a critical success. Um, and it's important at the moment. If you critically fail here, you might find yourself in some very dire circumstances. So let's do this. Let us see what you get. So... Uh, survival 14 and then the bless or the guidance yeah an extra one 15 and yours are d6s aren't you so yeah yeah it's d6 yeah although i do kind of grip my teeth with the music somewhat <laughs> an extra three <laughs> well achieve yeah. advantage for him um uh, if, if you're working together then I'm, I'm more than happy for another d20 to be rolled as well i mean you have an 18 there but you you are technically working together so it's yes, a good job it's a, um, a good job but he just didn't roll for himself yeah um, because i will remind you that uh, a natural one is a critical fail um so but an 18 it's not critical success but it's a success and um doing all the things you said kind of looking back trying to triangulate the direction taking advantage of the light um you kind of get a rough direction and uh, you keep to that track as well with the 18 um, and uh, the field of vision is is vast uh, there are kind of crevasses and there are kind of uh, large chunks of ice sort of rising out of the ground but in many of the places it's just this vast ice plain with you moving towards this ever escalating mountain range um and there is little life here um little danger it is the train that's a danger but the dice that you have rolled are good and days go by fortunately with the supplies that you have procured it is meager rations and tasteless but it keeps your strength up meaning you don't suffer any consequences for your journey and after you think for maybe five days it's getting very difficult to judge now unless someone's got an innate ability to do it there is no night and day there is only walking sleeping walking sleeping to kind of judge time and of course you're not particularly waiting for 24 hours to go you doing your eight hour rests and moving forward and it becomes a little confusing you not knowing exactly how the time is being passed uh, but as you yeah, does, does have the wanderer feature which is an excellent memory for maximum geography you can always tell the general layout of terrain yeah i'm not i would say settlement and other features around you but there's not a lot of settlements and the, the features are pretty much the hills yeah this if is you find one you'll remember it yeah this is pretty much that it's you, you're not lost you, as i say you've got this point of reference this set of mountains it's just relentless and in many mm. ways boring you know what and it becomes a, an exercise of motivating yourselves to get up in the morning in the freezing cold to carry on moving forward. Um, it's not quite as bad as you might as well give up. Um, but I'm sure Ty is trying to keep motivation up, which is probably going to work uh, well on some of you and not so well on others. I was, I was just about to say, Andy, that probably on about maybe day three or four, 
um, of this journey that, that as, as the rest of them wake, because I require sort of less sleep, obviously, I do the trance thing. Um, as the rest of you wake, you'll hear Ty muttering, going, oh, oh no, oh, it's happened again. Oh, I mean, what's the point anyway? Just snow, ice and cold. Should have stayed at home. Uh, and as you will look up, you will see Ty's skin has turned light blue. Uh, his hair is now white and has actually shortened um, and is uh, almost cropped uh, in, in kind of a, a sweat backside parting. And it's white. Ty, you appear to be suffering from an extreme case of hypothermia. Uh, uh, yes, well, no. Uh, would that it were that interesting, Vanobrian, my friend. Uh, no, simply a changing of the season and uh, another version of myself. Uh, nothing more. Another version of yourself? Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, what? Uh, well, uh, uh, my, my people, you see, uh, we are uh, prone to change. Um, depending on our our moods uh, we effectively uh we reflect a season of uh of uh, of the climate uh, depending on how we feel and uh, i'm afraid this drudgery of of travel uh, appears to have pushed me into a a wintry mood okay well uh... does this mean you'll be less singing <laughs> Uh, possibly. I can tell you if I do sing it, it will most likely be more melancholy. Yeah, it's more appropriate, I believe. Excellent. Yeah. Well, let's get to these mountains and see where we can go from here. Indeed. Yes, I suppose we might as well. I don't fancy dying on this ice. So come on. Uh, time passes, and again, day upon day, your mood gets more potentially melancholy i guess your supplies getting uh, less and less and less and it is perhaps on the eighth day uh, when you are perhaps thinking uh, what is the point that you begin to see something um, within these foothills there seems to be an area of darkness of black a place where there is no snow. At first you think it's some of this black rock jutting out. It's difficult to tell in the glare of the ever-present sun. Um, but as you squint and you see, you realise it is a large opening into the side of these foothills. A good 40-50 feet across um there is still snow that seems to be pouring down into it um but it is shelter and it is potentially maybe a way through or something else a sign of shelter is there any kind of trucks leading up to it any obvious activity around the area uh give us a survival roll please I will guide myself as I go in. Yeah, yeah. Look about. Very good. There is movement, um, especially towards the entrance of the cave. And the movement is, it looks like this is where potentially people have entered from being brought across the ice. Um, where the snow hasn't sort of resettled, there are frozen tracks in the ice uh, showing showing movement. You've got a 24. It's very good. Um, yeah, you and the, there's been quite a lot of traffic, uh, mainly going into the cave with the occasional set of prints coming out of the cave. Oh, it looks like we're going into the darkness. 
and I will share the map with you. Oh, good. Uh, light does come in from the outside, so you can see that distance. Uh, there is a dim, pervasive green light coming, and you can kind of see this is a slope sort of here going down. And you can kind of see round about here where the snow line ends that there is unbelievably what looks like vegetation. I think we head towards that. So I don't see we have much choice at this point. Mm. And then gardens does rather suggest there would be vegetation. This is a promising sign. Well, it's either that or we go backwards towards the snow that will kill us all, so... Uh, we do need supplies. And also, the only reason I'm still here is the look on those children's faces when we left the port. I don't want to see people have those looks again. Well, I just don't fancy dying in the cold. I might as well die in some vegetation. Mm, yes, I'd rather be closer to some plants. It's been far too long since I've seen any. Well, let's move. Pedius has been um, carving into the handle of his maul um, the, the giantish runes for Tijuana. Genetically. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Uh, so, you can uh, move your um, move your characters around the map so you can go and explore and I'm obviously watching at the moment so I can see where you where you are moving so it is we should stay together one passageway at a time aye the north one shall we go there I shall I shall go in the front yes I the north one the one who falls down the hole first this time <laughs> huh. and every time yeah, I mean, this is quite a steep ramp of snow and ice, somewhat sort of stepped. And it, this cave where you are around about now would be getting quite dark. Uh, but you can see where the vegetation is. There are certain bits of sort of fungal matter that is kind of growing, some kind of bioilluminescence. And as you, you're kind of still in the snowy area at the moment. Uh, I kind of pat everyone on the shoulders. Um, everyone gets dark vision out to a range of 300 foot. Wow. So I give you the eyes of night. Very nice. That's for now, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, Edius is going to use his uh, maul as, as almost a... Top the ground. Yeah. And just there's ice. He doesn't want to fall through anything. Yeah. This looks. If it gets to be covered in vegetation at some point, you might think again. Yeah. It, it it's it's ice where you are at the moment, um, without a doubt. Um, I mean, you are an experienced explorer, so you are aware that even though the ice can look firm, it you know it could have melted underneath, and there could be basically a hollow that you could fall into so taking such precautions is good but as you start sort of looking down here sort of at here you basically begin to see that there is a substantial amount of growth it is fungal in design and uh, this is a very nice image for you mm. It's substantial. And this is you kind of looking back out. If you kind of sort of look here, this is where the ice is out of the cavern. Uh, so it's kind of taken from the other the other angle. I've managed to get Edius to be in the tree. Yeah, it was amazing, that was. Um, but yeah, it is substantial. I mean, and I mean, this shouldn't really be here you don't think it's 
I mean, those tales, those rumours seem to be true. As you get to about Edith. there, Edius, can you give me a... Uh... I was going to say, Edius is trying to sort of like peer around the corner at the left as well and see if there's anything there, but yeah. go on. I was just say, give me a potentially a perception roll, please. Okay, yeah, I mean, you just see what you see, fundamentally. Yeah. Sort of uh, keeping an eye out behind him to make sure everyone's still coming. I'm using my uh, big quarterstaff as a as some sort of a walking stick at the moment. Just yeah. To prop myself up as a... Um, it's sort of... All right, the rest of you can give us perception rolls now as you are getting within range of seeing the gardens proper. Um, I'm just trying to work out how to do this. I get someone new to this. Rubbish. <laughs> uh, it's fine with you, uh, uh, Dino Brion. Um, you basically see there are small creatures uh, amongst the vegetation and they uh, look like this, again made of plants. Uh, it's primarily the humanoid type creatures as they are most definitely attempting to hide, uh, but you can see them sort of clearly. No one else has seen them yet. They are trying to hide from you. I put my hand up in the fist symbol that is kind of slow. Mm -hmm. Wait. And um, I kind of whisper, we are being watched. Prepare yourselves. Goody. <laughs> of course we are. Where? Um, Dibrian shouts down at these, these things in the distance. Mm-hmm. Show yourselves and speak, or hide in the darkness and be sought out. Okay, uh, with that, they realize that they are off and they begin to uh, begin to move forward, moving out of their cover. Uh, they draw their uh, sort of small sort of spears made from the uh the stalks of some of this vegetation and they look like they are going to uh, attack. You don't appear to have the guard, the guide that would be bringing you in. Maybe they can sense that you are of meat, um, but they're most definitely taking aggressive actions towards you. Uh, I Sorry. I don't, suppose, I don't suppose anybody's got a flame. These things look like they could go up in, the, in, in, in like Tinder. <laughs> Uh, as you say that, you might want to give me some initiative rolls, please. I think I get advantage on that because of my stupid ability. Yeah. This code cast gets a load of things. It's crazy cool. Yeah, are you playing like the Twilight one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we, we, we were potentially looking at that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take the 20, though. Yeah, yeah. No, it's super good. We're looking at the Twilight character as a, as a power build, um, but we haven't analysed it yet. Um, okay, so uh, we've got that. Um, so you got, sorry, let me do this. You got a 20, yeah? Uh, yeah, I just had to re-roll it because I forgot about the advantage. Yeah, well. no worries. So let me sort that out for you and put you. you on 20 there. So top of the round, it is indeed yourself that is going first. Uh, we'll draw my longbow and take a single arrow, notch it, and fire at the closest of these mm -hmm. veggie pygmies. Oh, wow. That's not bad. That is <laughs> amazing. Yes. Uh, a critical hit. I've been in a long time, but this bow does do well. <laughs> uh, sort of partially damaged. Um, 
um, but heavily. Um, you notice that um, it seems that piercing damage um, seems to kind of go through it a little bit. It's fibrous sort of makeup. Um, is that your go? Yes, I am done. Okay. Uh, this one here is going to... Sort of double move to there and we move to, oops, Edius. The one uh, that seems to be towards the entrance as if it were trying to flank us. Uh, well, yeah, you see it just ran across there. Um, looking ahead at the uh, terrain ahead, do I think it will be difficult to rent it to... No, it, I mean, it's you will be able to move through it normally. Then uh, I shall somewhat recklessly. It is the the creature that is directly ahead of us. There's the one that the, this one here. Uh, Veggie Pygmy one is the one that just been attacked. Yeah, is yeah. that correct? It has an arrow sticking yeah. out of it. Ah, there are more. I shall move six squares forward, 30 feet. Yeah. And I shall swing my maul. So, yeah, give it a target. Uh, a 19 is going to hit anyway. Yeah. Uh, and you have, it's number one that you are targeting. There we go. There we go. So damage. Damage, uh, yeah. so 24 to hit, is that a critical? Uh, it will be a critical with our rules, I believe. Just give us a moment. Yep, just about, but it's a crit. So four dice instead of the two d6. Yep. Uh, oh, that, that is very nice, as it instantly is killed as you smash it. Uh, that would give me the opportunity to use a bonus action to... Um, to hit again, but there's nobody next to me now, and I've moved all my movement. Mm. So, so I shall wait here. You wait there, and then we move to a tie. Okay, Ty's so gonna go. Do you want to remove the uh, pygmy one? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> and uh, he will. Uh... Look at that one, and almost half-heartedly, um, we'll we'll shout at them and say, Ugh, "Not just small, you're ugly," <laughs> and it will vicious mockery. It fails. It somehow seems to understand <laughs> uh, you, what you're saying to it, <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts deep. It's a very sensitive soul, is that? <laughs> Uh, then we move to Veggie Pygmy 4, uh, which is going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, 30, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, which will move to there. And number 5, we'll do about the same, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then we move to Veggie Pygmy 1. Yes! Uh, it's strange. As you kind of smash it with this and it goes unconscious, at the start of its turn, it seems to... <laughs> and rise again, using half of its movement to stand up. And it's going to attack you. Um, it's going to attack you with its claws. And it misses you. And then we move to Theon. I will shoot... I'm thinking... Um, they don't look like they're going to stay dead. This could be a problem. Uh, I'm going to shoot Veggie Pygmy 1 again with my short bow. 
Okay, so uh, to target, um, you can uh, control left click on your target. That should target it for you. That's it, perfect. And you go across to your actions page. Yeah, so was it? Uh, uh, yeah. And then click on the the plus to hit. Yeah. Very nice. That isn't a critical hit. It is one short of a critical hit, uh, but it's a hit. And you've got an ally, so you will get your sneak attack as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just do your normal damage first. Um, and it's partially resisted that damage. Um, that couldn't be any worse. <laughs> uh, and then I believe it's just an extra D6. D6, yeah. Uh, D6, so that will be that. Yeah, and that is enough uh, to take it down again as Veggie Pygmy one goes down. Anything else you want to do? Uh, I'm going to actually move up towards it. Okay. So I can see what's going on. Uh, that should be enough. Okay, yeah, very nice. Let me move to Veggie Pygmy 2. Veggie Pygmy 2 is going to move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, and is going he, to... And he, he will have disadvantage because he failed his vicious mockery, didn't he? <sighs> but you, uh, not not two. Two's only... Well, who, who did you do? Because you did one point of damage, and that damage hasn't shown up. Why hasn't that damage shown up? Because uh, you did one point of damage, didn't you? Yeah, it's a veggie pygmy too. Yeah. Oh, I know why. It's got regeneration. That's that's. You did damage it, but it's it's fine. Uh, but it has got disadvantage. You are perfectly right. <laughs> uh, I was checking it for the damage, the one that you damaged, but obviously at the start of its turn, uh, that it does not apply. What what madness is this against creatures with regeneration? And you're only level two. Surely not. Uh, yes. Uh, but your disadvantage means it drops the 16 on the dice and replaces it with a 4, and it misses you, Theon. Yeah. Uh, Veggie Pig yeah. 3 is going to move 10, 15, 20, 25 to you, Idios. Giving you lots of targets for your crazy bonus action. And it attempts to try and hit you and misses as well. And then we go back to Dinobrian. Uh, Dinobrian moves Dinobrian. forward. Dinobrian. 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, oh, we have more coming in from behind. Um, Dinobrian will present a holy symbol. And we are all shrouded in dim light. Mm. He uses his Twilight Sanctuary ability. Very nice. Uh, I ended my turn, and at the end of everybody's turn, they gain temporary hit points. What? Um, what is your dim light radius? It's a thirty-foot radius on me. A thirty-foot radius, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, nice. And when at the end of their turn, they get um, they get a hit point, yeah. Yeah, everybody's end of the turn. They get um, okay, temporary hit points. I'll, I'll do it myself to you guys when it's your end of turn. So that double moves towards you, and then we move to Edius. Uh, has anyone got some fire? We need to burn these creatures. Um, he's going to hit Veggie Pygmy 1 again, I think, because Veggie Pygmy 1... Oh, no, Veggie Pygmy 1 went, went back down, didn't it? Yeah. Flames off my speciality. I have a tinderbox. Then I will hit okay, Veggie we'll Pygmy 2 as hard as I possibly can. Okay, give us a roll to hit. Uh, I'll just make sure I haven't got two targeted. I have. So, if I managed to untarget Veggie Pygmy, I yeah. think I have. So, do you want to do just number two? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, there you go. You're doing number two now. Uh, oops, and uh, a 14 will hit. Uh, and you kill it. Goes down. Okay. So, with uh, my 
great weapon master feat, isn't it? That if I, I score a critical hit or reduce a creature to zero hit points with one, you can make one melee attack as a bonus action. Yeah. So I shall hit Veggie Pygmy three. Okay, let us. Oh, yeah, you've got it. You're targeting it. Nicely done. I think so. Uh, roll to hit. And that hits. Maybe me some damage. And that one goes down as well as you kind of smash these down. And then we move to Tim. Ty. Uh, oh, well, seeing Edius do all that, that's scuppered my plan. Um, so I think Ty uh, will kind of uh, turn around, see that there's one right next to me, uh, uh, and draw a dagger. Yep. Uh, uh, just stab at it. Perfect. You hit. And you wound it. And you uh, gain. Yep. Sorry, anything else you want to do? No, nah, I, don't, I don't think there's any, any bonus action-y stuff just yet. No, I think we're good. So uh, that double moves towards you, and then this one. That double moves towards you, and then Veggie Pygmy 1 stands back up again. Um, unfortunately, they don't have pack tactics or anything like that, uh, but they will rinse and repeat and miss you. Then we move to Theon. I... Well, again, attack. I'll attack the one behind on Veggie Pygmy 4 mm -hmm. uh, with my rapier uh, control. Okay. Let us zoom in for oh, no, our oh, viewers. No. Um, control. It's a Veggie Pygmy 4. Yep. Uh, with my rapier. And, uh, da, 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 da. and I'll probably move this. Yeah, so hit. hit. And I do no damage. Uh, but you do get a sneak attack as well. Oh, attack. Uh, sneak attacks just roll the d6, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's at your level. It's just 1d6. Two. Yeah, which will be one because of piercing. Okay, and then we move to Veggie Pygmy 2. Uh, this one stands up and was targeting you, Theon. This time hitting you and not for a huge amount of damage, and your temporary hit points absorb it. Then Veggie Pygmy 3 uh, stands up and is going to do the same thing. Up, and that hits you, Edius, again for a terrible roll, and the temporary hit points doing a great job. And then we move to Dino Brian. That is a dark word, and a grey light emits a word of radiance. Mm, very nice. A couple of failures. Uh, uh, and end of my turn, temporary hit point shenanigans. Job done. Very nice. Ah. And then we move to six. Six uh, is going to oh, uh, target you. Um, I miss. I move to Edius. Oh. They just won't so all die. Three of them are up. Yeah. Is someone is someone lighting a fire? I'll keep hitting them. Uh, Sounds like Pygmy. a plan. Two is the one that's nearest my colleagues, so I will target that instead of Veggie Pygmy three. Yep. Try and uh, remove it from the uh, the board, as it were. I believe I used to see children playing this game at school. <laughs> or was it arcades? It was called Lacanol. Lacanol. <laughs> uh, you just about hit with that. And you do I think I can re-roll the one, but it doesn't matter. Goes down. 
Uh, you can use your bonus action if you want. Yeah, I'll um, I'll now target Veggie Pygmy three instead of Veggie Pygmy two, and I'll uh, and you hit. Also hit. A very nice taking him down again. Okay, is these things won't stop standing up again. Uh, then we move to Ty. <coughs> Actually, um, can I just... I'm going to move back a square like this, which yeah. is probably provoking an attack of opportunity. It is more than probably. Oh. It definitely... Sorry, I, I thought you weren't going to do that. So you only have... You have less temporary hit points. Remember That's this. okay. Uh, I remember. So it is going to... It's trying to target you. It might not hit. Oh, it is a critical hit. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, actually wounding you this time as you move back. Okay. So Andy, what, 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 um, I don't know if you want to care about it, but Dan Abraham applied the temporary, new temporary hit points to me before he should have done because he didn't realize I was going to move. So I should have taken more damage. Okay. Or we can just leave it. Well, uh, and I've got no temporary hit points left for yeah. if anyone else has me this turn. I don't uh, mind. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so, uh, Ty, you'll go. Um, he'll say, oh, fire, is it? Uh, and he'll just, um, uh, using his free hand, he'll reach into his pack and pull out a flask of oil, mm -hmm. which I, I have. That is a thing. <laughs> uh, I have two of them, in fact. Woohoo! I have a tinderbox. Yeah, and I will attempt to um, just pour it on veggie pygmy six uh yeah i think it's uh if you're not throwing it uh there's rules for flask of oil but um i'm fairly certain you can just pour it over someone yeah it says you yeah there's a thing if you throw it at people yeah it says, um, you can also pour a flask of oil on the ground to cover a five foot square yeah um, um so you're gonna do, you're gonna uh target veggie pygmy six yeah yeah, I'll do it on Veggie Pygmy 6, yeah. Okay, so uh, he's doused in oil now. Okay, um, so oil, that's a whole flask, isn't it? So yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, uh, then bonus action, mm. uh, I will uh, uh, start singing an old uh, an old uh, sort of fairy tale song about um, a fire elemental, and I will inspire um, Dinobrian. Okay, perfect. You have inspiration. Let me move to Veggie Pygmy 4, uh, which is this one here. Um, uh, Veggie Pygmy 4 is not targeting anybody at the moment, uh, but it will go for you, seeing that, and it will attack with its claws, hitting you. Is there any reactions or anything you would like to do? No, no, nothing. No. Uh, so it will catch you. Oh, that's nice. Uh, for eight points, and then we move to Veggie Pygmy five, uh, which again is going to target you because the same person can, uh, and miss. And then we move to Veggie Pygmy one, uh, which uh, regenerates a bit and is going to move in and. Is currently targeting you and will miss. And then we move to Theon. I will, um, I'll try and light the torch I've got if I can in my, in my bag. All right, this um, is going to be a bit of a complex action. You get one sort of free item interaction, which is to take right. something out of your bag. If you want to use your entire turn lighting your torch, you can yep. do. I'll use my entire turn in turn lighting my okay. torch. So you, oh, madam, your turn goes Flame torch. and you have lit a torch. Now, just so you're aware, a torch, if you if you hit somebody with it, will just do one point of fire damage. Uh, but that might be all you need. Uh, then we move to Veggie Pygmy number two. Uh, Veggie Pygmy number two does not like 
uh, the fire and moves across there is going to target you Theon uh, and hit you God. attempting to damage you so that you can't use this veggie pygmy 3 is going to move in and again you are ca carrying currently <laughs> Uh, the, they don't like me. <laughs> the brand, and uh, they don't like the brand. Uh, that fortunately misses. Then we move to uh, Dino Brian. Darkness. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've done it to myself as well, I think, or something. But um, yeah, um, con saves. Uh, thankfully, I passed my own con save, so I didn't hurt myself. Yeah. My own spell. Um, uh, fortunately for them, they all passed as well, so nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, that is me done. Very nice. And then we move to number number six. Uh, number six is not liking what is going on here, and is going to move to oops here. <laughs> uh, uh, provoke? No, it's not going to move to there. Why would he do that? He's going to move to there and then there. So. Uh, Dino, uh, Dino, Brian, you do get an attack of opportunity. Carrying anything relevant to that. Okay. Uh, and it is going to target Theon again with the torch. I feel like they're going to try. They're trying to get me. <laughs> oh, that is a hit. God. Uh, doing a little bit more of damage. They are definitely not liking the torch. Uh, then we move to Idias. Hang in there, Fion. Hurry up and kill these people! Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I believe that job now falls to you. Idias goes, okay. He's going to start with... Pit, pit, uh, he's not going to start with Veggie Pick, pick Me 6. He's going to leave that because that's next to time. Time can sort it out. He's going to... Stick with Veggie Pygmy 3, why not? Okay. Six that were covered in oil. Simply. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Number six, number is, six. six is doused in oil. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you hit. It's a hit. I could re-roll a one, but I don't think I need to. You don't, it is down. And you can use your bonus action once again, should you wish to. I shall use that on Veggie Pygmy 2, which I don't think is covered in oil. It is up to you. The only one that has oil on it at the moment is 6. You can you can see that. It is an obvious effect. Uh, but Ooh. you miss. <gasps> is that your go? Anything else you want to do? Uh, I could action surge. You but are I'm, only at the edge of the gateway of the Guardian. I will wait. I will wait. Okay. I'm going to be dead by the time. I'm not even going to get it. And then yeah. we move to Ty. Uh, Ty is just... It will drop the uh, the empty oil flask, so that's no longer in his hands. Yeah. Um, and uh, he will... Uh, I, I don't have any torches, so I cannot light one. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that... You, just, you just bought oil, not torches. <laughs> Apparently so, yeah. I've got a lantern. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so in which case he will, um, uh, I think he will probably just keep stabbing away at number six. Yep, that's good. Because obviously the winter form of uh, an Eladrin is perfect when you need fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you try and slice out with your dagger and miss. Is it and all? I will, um, I will then um, uh, continue the, the song about the fire elemental, but this time looking at Thane, and I will inspire him. Good. Uh, is it all over for Thane as Veggie Pygmy 4 is now going to target oh. the torchbearer? I need some lucky rolls. And hit. Again, only for three points. And then Veggie Pygmy 5, which is here, uh, is oops, going to uh, move 
to there again if you've got anything you can do dino brian you are more than welcome but no you didn't have last time so one is assuming you don't this time and it will do the same thing again and miss and then we move to veggie pygmy one which will slide into here and you have a perfect you have <laughs> so many friends now theon <laughs> And again, another miss. Oh. And then Theon, right. it is your go. Right, I, I, I lash out at the, at the pygmy covered in oil behind his veggie pygmy okay. six. Um, I just need to quickly... Uh, I'm just going to have a look at Torch. Because uh, I don't know whether you need to make an attack roll or whether it is automatic. Torch, torch. It just does one damage as well. Uh, yeah. Better. If you make a melee attack with a burning torch, it deals one fire damage. So you are going to have to make a melee attack. So are you going to target the one in oil? The one in oil, yeah. Okay. So it, if, it takes any, if it takes any fire damage, it takes an additional fire, five fire damage. Yeah, to the absolutely. So uh, you're targeting it now. Give us uh, an attack roll. What's, the, what's um, the attack roll? I'm, I'm going to, it's, uh, technically speaking, it should be with strength. So roll a d20 plus, uh, you're going to well, be a plus yeah. three, we will say, because I'm going to give you proficiency with it as well. Why not? 16 is, yeah, easily enough. So you have hit it. Um, yeah. So did you say it's an extra five? five fire damage yeah if it takes any fire damage it takes an extra five from so cinematically this thing goes up it has got um uh where are we veggie pygmy six is what we're talking about here let's have a look at this where are you it hasn't got any wounds at the moment so it's now got six wounds one from the torch and five from that and more importantly it has taken fire damage this turn uh that is very good uh then with that we move to veggie pygmy number two um yeah this is very much rinse and repeat here as it's going to try and take down the fire bearer missing you again you have a charmed life <laughs> I have something. Again, another miss. And then we move to uh, Dino Brian. The greyness that currently surrounds us all becomes become oppressive and um, slowly start to send people to sleep as I cast sleep in a square covering all the pygmies and all my allies. All so, right. Could go bad, could go well. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. I don't believe these are immune to sleep. Um, so 19 hit points worth of sleeping. Okay, uh, complicated, not really. Um, so uh, they are not resistant to sleep. So let us look at the wounds first. Um, so we, you did 19 points, yeah? Yeah. So Veggie Pygmy 3 is going to go down sorry number six is going down uh and that will be three points uh that is going to be another three points so six and three have definitely gone down um then i believe uh, another two points there for Veggie pig me two, so that's six, seven, eight. Uh, then veggie pig me four is going to be eight wounds, so that is sixteen, um, and that is going to be it. So veggie pig me six, three, two, and four fall into a slumber. I highly recommend you burn to death the ones that are still awake. Uh, and that's my turn. Perfect. Uh, uh, just, I just read on as well, Andy, that um, that oil will burn for two rounds and deal fire damage. 
at the end of the creature's turn to them if they're still on fire. Okay, um, and that is Veggie Pig, Pig B6. So yeah. it, it doesn't regenerate and it takes another five points of damage. That is enough to kill it and it burns. So the damage kind of, it's quite horrific really in the fact that the fire damage awakens it from the sleep but also consumes it. So you see it sort of writhing around in agony as the fire sort of takes it. Uh, number six is dead. And then we move to Edius. So uh, number two is asleep. Two, three, and four are asleep. Okay. Five is difficult to get to, but number one is easy to get to. So yeah. we'll hit number one. Okay, give us an attack. Now that is or a not. miss, unfortunately, if you <sighs> swing. Uh, and then we move to Ty. Uh, so two, three, and four, didn't you? That was what you said. Yeah. Um, so in which case, four will not get an attack against me if I move out, but I'm not going anywhere. So I'll step across there. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will carry on stabbing things because apparently it works. Yeah. And it most definitely <laughs> does. Yeah. Excellent. No greater <laughs> word spoken. Uh, <laughs> as you kind of stab it, but it is resistant, resistant to piercing damage. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, you damage it. I think um, I will. Uh, so I think two of them are already. Do you know what? Let's go for the hat trick. I'll carry on the song and I'll use my final bardic inspiration on Idius. Okay. Uh, so number four is currently asleep. Uh, Veggie Pygmy five though isn't. Veggie Pygmy five is again going to rinse and repeat, and will hit. Uh, are you doing much better damage? Uh, fortunately, your temporary hit points given you from this Twilight cleric here absorbs it. Then we go to Veggie Pygmy number one. Uh, Veggie Pygmy number one is going to do the same thing again and try and attack you. And again, hitting you. He's uh, going to kill me. Uh, doing heavy damage now to you. Desperately trying to stop this thing. And then we move to you, Theon. Right. I'm going to attack the one that's asleep for, for Veggie Pygmy four. With uh, the torch. Now, if you attack something that is sleeping and do damage to it, you will wake it up. Ah. Just so um, you're aware. That's a uh, sort of mechanical rule that you would be yeah, aware no. of. It's up to you. You uh, can still do it. I mean, it would be covered in flames. Uh, good point. It's uh, not covered I... in oil. It's just uh, <laughs> yeah, no. do one, fire point, one point of fire damage. Um, yeah, I, I, I will... T I will use my rapier in the other hand then and, and attack Veggie Pygmy 5, which seems to be doing me all the damage. Yeah, Veggie Pygmy 5 is still up at the moment. Uh, attack, attack, so attack, so there we go. Uh, uh, action skills. Oh, action, ah, there we are. Uh, rapier. I talked to myself far too much. 50. Yep, you hit. Uh, yep, so. Sneak attack. Uh, you do just a minute because you you're not targeting it. Uh, okay, sorry. Five. I need to put this in. So that was piercing damage. So it will be two. Yeah, you can roll a d6 as well. Uh, so that will be another one point of damage. Okay. Uh, very good. Can we do something about this, please? Reggie Pygmy two is asleep, so it's not doing anything. Veggie Pygmy 3 is currently asleep, and then we move to Dino Brian. I just have a dark word, this time at Veggie Pygmy number 5, as I cast Toll the Dead. Very nice. Oop, it fails. I believe he's been injured recently. Uh, heavily damaging him. And then he's we... my goat, but I'm going to move into this square here. Yep, no worries. And then we move to Edius. Does this circle move around you still? Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's waiting it on me. There we go. Edius is going to stare at Theon. He's going to say, 
Hit them with the fire. And he's going to hit number one. Okay. Um, which I think I've probably still got targeted, but I've somewhat lost. Yeah, I have. Yeah, you've got number one targeted still. And you hit. Uh, heavily damaging it, but not killing it. So no bonus action. Okay. Is that your go? I think so. Then we move to Ty. Uh, Ty will um, uh, seemingly for the first time notice uh, how haggard shit is looking. Um, shit! I will uh, cast Healing Word using a bonus action. Yep. Uh, is that... Should that be... Plus spellcasting ability modifier, so that should have been more. Uh, so how much would you uh, would you have done more? It would have been another three, so another three points of healing. Uh, let's have a look. Healing word. Uh, uh, you've just got it down as a D4 for the thing. So it should be plus your uh, charisma. charisma. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. There oh, we no. go. So I've done that for you now. But you would have done another three healing. Yeah. So yeah. let us sort that out for you. Uh, reducing his fun. wounds down to six wounds. Very nice. Um, and that's yep. his action. So for his action, I mean, if it ain't broke, he's going to carry on stabbing Veggie Pygmy 1. Okay. I like that philosophy. Stab it! Stab it! <laughs> it's done it again. I think, didn't you say 23 was a crit? 23 is actually a crit with our, the way that we do the rules. They're armor class of 13. Uh, so, yeah, so you take it down. <laughs> Very nice. I've hit the thing with the biggest hammer. Yeah. A little, little cutty cutty dagger man is doing all the damage. Uh, I did well say that a shiv is a shiv <laughs> is a shiv. Uh, it's how you, how you use the weapon. It's not the size that counts. It's how you use it. Uh, Veggie Pygmy 4 is um, still Sweet asleep. Uh, Veggie Pygmy 5, though, isn't. Um, and it stands back up again and seeks to undo some of this work that has been done. And critically hitting Theon. Oh. Uh, absorbing some of the damage, but doing some nice damage to Theon. Uh, Veggie Pygmy 1 is also, um, okay, standing back up and attempts to finish Theon off uh, and hits. Uh. And uh, Theon goes down, the brand oh. dropping to the floor. Uh, Theon, you take a death failure. Uh, oh, no. Then we go to Veggie Pygmy 2 that is asleep. Oops. And Veggie brand. Pig 3, who is asleep, and uh, Dino Brian. Um, yeah. <laughs> points won't get you up, so I won't give you any of those. Um, but I will um, place a hand on Theon um, and cast Cure Wounds. Okay, very nice. Oh, that's solid as well. And if you drop that torch again, <laughs> you will not be got up again. Oh. You've been left here to die in the darkness. Um, that's it's my turn. them with the fire. <laughs> we move to Edius. Edius. Um, Pygmy number one got up again, didn't he? Uh, yeah. At the, uh, at the start of their turn, they they regen. So Yeah, uh, exactly. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hit him again. <laughs> Burn fire. <laughs> uh, that is a critical hit. So yeah, you knock that one down quite nicely. Um, now burn it. You, you have the option of using your Taking bonus action. <laughs> um, I, I just not. Oh, can I walk past the sleeping one without actually causing it to wake up? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's only so I can if you stand in its square like you, that. You can't stand in its square. 
but you can move through its space <laughs> because it's so I could not... go to there and go there yeah. and then hit that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, okay, we'll do that then. Um so yeah, burn that one. It's as easy as he, he then marches tiptoes gently across all of these sleeping things without trying to wake them up and then we'll okay. try and hit this. You hit. Uh, nice, and that one goes down. All the one, do I? No, no, it goes down. And then we move to Ty. So if if I'm right, is Thien lying at my feet with a torch just lying on the ground? Yeah, basically at the moment, because there's can no I, chance. Can I, pick, can I pick the torch up? Yeah, item interaction. I will pick the torch up. And looking at the unconscious veggie pig meat to my side, I'm going to kind of shrug my shoulders and try and hit him with it. Yeah. Uh, the unconscious one that's dying, um, I'm just going to say it's an action to apply the fire. Um, it, you know, it, it makes sense that you... It's not moving, it's dying. Normally, if if you if it was like you had to get through armour or whatever, um, fundamentally... You've got advantage on your attack. I'm going to say it's an automatic success. Which one are you hitting with that? It is number one who is currently unconscious. Okay. So that fundamentally means that it can't regenerate on its turn. So number one is down and out now. I am saying it's taken your action to do that, though. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, you, do, you still have a move and you still have a bonus action uh, if you want to do anything else. I am all out of Bardic Inspiration, and I think I'm going to save my healing. So, yeah, no, that's me. Yeah. And just to clarify, because Brooks is just asking in chat, does instant death impact regeneration? No, it doesn't. Um, but you, you've kind of got them on the ropes a little bit now. Four is still asleep. Five isn't. And five stands up. Um... But the tactics have changed. Because uh, uh, Theon is on the floor. And doesn't have the torch. Uh, but doesn't have the torch <laughs> now. No, absolutely. And it would be incredibly mean of me just to attack you, even though it would have advantage with you being prone. Um, oh. So what it's going to do is do what everything else is going to... It's going to prompt an attack of opportunity from you, Oedipus. So if you want to give it a roll, you can. Um, and you hit, so you might well take this one down. Yep, you do. So it goes back down before it can kind of get to... Hey, down. Um, then we move to uh, Theon. I get up, I guess, is the... Uh, yeah. The... Struggle to my feet, propping myself up. Uh, so this takes half your movement, but you still have... Um, you still have... I'll move here. Uh -huh. Now, one is assuming you've got more than one torch. Uh, I've just says torch in my inventory, so... Well, normally you don't just have uh, a single torch. You would have... Just uh, torch one. These are going packs of tens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only last one hour. Uh, boom, boom, boom. So torch. We'll say you've got nine more torches in there. So you could oh. you could use your action to light another torch, and then you would have two torches. Yeah, I will light another torch. I guess yes. Okay, very nice. And then veggie pygmy two is still asleep. A veggie pygmy three is still asleep. Uh, and then we move to Dino Brian. I move here and prepare to say a word of discouragement to one that might wake up. Okay. So holding your action there. Edius. Uh, burn burn five just now. I haven't got the torch. Oh, okay. So who's got the torch? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ready an action um, for number five if he stands up again to hit him again. Sounds... So if, it, if, it, if number five moves, I'm going <laughs> to prepare an attack with them all. Yep, that sounds good. And then we move to Ty. Well, seeing how successful that was for me last turn, mm -hmm. I think Ty is going to go do do <laughs> do do, and he's going to put a torch to number five. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so number five goes down. It it's at this point uh, that 
you you've got this now there are two torches amongst you um together all together you can easily finish these sleeping creatures off so there's no real need it's it's unlikely that they're going to do any more damage to you because you can choose one at a time Edius can smash it uh, and the rest of you can burn it so it can't regenerate and you can pick these three off fairly rapidly um, so uh, you dispatch the other veggie pygmies and burn Yay. it you are <laughs> successful it is surprising I, I, yeah sorry i collapse at the end of that I just go oh, oh, oh. Uh, i've never had that much problem with a vegetable since that time in oh well I'll have some other story. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a story i would very much like to hear um your twilight light does that does that how long does that continue for uh, I think it's a minute. A minute. Um, so I rolled an extra two dice for Theon to get the maximum temporary hit points. Yeah. And then it kind of ends. Yeah. Um, no, at that, the end of the combat. That is fine. And it, it takes you, you know, a few more sort of seconds and stuff to um, to recover, catch your breath, and your twilight comes. And it is at that point uh, that you all begin to hear something moving through the uh the the beautiful gardens this thing here uh it is a strange looking creature um as it comes into sight uh it is most definitely some kind of uh sort of mushroom folk uh just going to share this picture of what they kind of look like mm. um, but this one seems to have larger sort of growths upon it that are sort of white and there are spores sort of coming out of it and it begins to sort of move forward towards you not stealthing uh, and as it begins to approach you, it begins to reach out uh, to try and communicate with you. And that is where we will leave it till the oh, next time. I've just read the name, Ambassador Flabby Puffballs. It is indeed the deadly <laughs> Ambassador Flabby Puffballs. Uh, how well is this going to go? So, uh, yes, uh, the combat took slightly longer than I had anticipated, uh, but you were successful. Um, uh, great combination of temporary hit points and um, sort of, you know, working out what you needed to do, really. Um, and some very good critical damage, even with daggers. Uh yeah. But for good or bad, you are going to have to deal with this individual that seems to be forthrightly moving towards you through this beautiful gardens. Uh, maybe to welcome you, maybe not. We will find out in two weeks' time. Just set fire to him. <laughs> uh, I, I'm... I suppose it will be our go-to strategy from now on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not talking him. Flex his muscles and stand in between the two who were standing there with torches. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we will see how it plays out. I want to say a big thank you to everybody staying with us tonight in chat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the players as well. Tomorrow night we go to the idyllic Ionia uh, for some more Untold Chronicles and then we go to Shadowless, the Underdark, on Sunday night. So if you get a chance, please hang out with us then. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great Saturday if we don't see you tomorrow night. Take care, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.